I thought for our next project we'd work on a scale model. And in this case, I chose a grandfather clock to model as part of, uh, say, dollhouse furniture. So if you're not into dollhouses, if that's not your thing, then uh, maybe you know somebody who does like to play with uh, dollhouses, and maybe this is an idea of something you could make for them as a gift. Or you can also apply these skills that you'll learn here uh, to designing anything to scale a boat, a plane, a submarine, just about anything that you want to design that already exists in the world, like a real life thing that you want to bring into a, make a model of, you'll follow these basic same techniques. So before we even start to make anything, we need to find a reference for our model. And uh, the internet is really good for finding reference material. Here on Google Images, I searched for grandfather clock. And you can see there are all kinds of grandfather clock designs to choose from. And even some people in, a, in some of these pictures to give us scale. So that's really good too. I chose one here from a furniture store I thought was uh, good. What makes a good reference photo is being able to see it straight on from a side. So I'm looking at it straight on from the front here. Now you can, what's really ideal is if you can see it from the front, this one side, at least one side, and the top. The perfect situation is if you can get a picture once from each side. So right, left, front, back, top, bottom. And then you can model the entire thing. So you can get you know photos or drawings or whatever, but just as long as they're not photos from an angle. Let's see. As an example, see this one is good at showing you detail on the sides, so it might make a good reference for later on in the process. But for getting scale, it's not a a, a really good uh, photo. You want something that's straight on. All right, so then I take, uh, took this photo and went into a graphics program and drew a grid over it. Now you can do this by printing the picture out and using a ruler to draw lines on it. How big these squares are doesn't matter as long as there are enough of them that you can get a good measure, but not so many that it completely you know, obstructs your view of what you can see. So I use a graphics program, but you can just print it out and draw lines on it. This gives us a sense of scale. And what that means is that we know how many, say, boxes tall that clock is and how many boxes wide it is and so we know the ratio of height to width, and that gives us a way to measure um, our model. So let's begin doing that. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Oops, let me look here. So I know I have all of two boxes here for the base. So from right there to right there is a little over two boxes. So I'm going to say that's two and one quarter boxes. You could get out rulers and actually measure um, the length of this line and the length of this line and get a really good, super accurate reading of the length. But for right now, that's good. And so now we need to pick a, a scale. So how many millimeters equals how many boxes? And you can just pick. One millimeter for each box 
for me, I think is going to be too small and 10 is going to be too large to actually fit in the design window for Tinkercad. So I'm going to go with five. So five of the boxes, five of these squares, or one of these squares equals five millimeters in Tinkercad. So being two and a quarter boxes high, might as well just get out our calculator. So 2.25 boxes high, squares high, times five millimeters. So our box on the model needs to be 11.25. And so I'm going to change the snap grid down to 0.25. And there we are, 11.25. Need something under that, though. So below this box is this one right here. And that's probably about half of uh, one of these squares. So half of five is going to be 2.5. So we need to bring out another box and make it 2.5. So let's figure out relatively how wide these are. So I've got, well, I know I've got four squares completely filled in. And then one square is half. So 4.5 times 5 is going to be 22.5. So this box needs to be 22.5. Now we can't see the clock from the side in that picture, so we don't know how, how deep it is. We're going to have to guess. But the front view is the important part anyway, so we'll work with that. And this one is all four of those boxes wide, plus most of one and part of another. So we're going to say five and a quarter. How about that? So 5.25 times 5, 26.25. So this one down here needs to be 26. Oops, what am I doing? There we go. 26.25. And it looks like it comes out a little bit from the other box. And then we're going to need to go down uh, 2.5 so that it's underneath. Let's line those two up. So using a line. Now I don't want to center the alignment on the back. I want actually the backs to be aligned so the back is flat. I know I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to make this, I'm going to actually make it by laying it down on its back and print up from there. And let's get this whole thing up over the work plane. There. So as you can see, we've got a good start here on our scale model. Okay. Now, Next part is going to be this one right here, this little spot, little shelf. And we see that it's a little bit wider, but not as wide as the base. So it probably doesn't stick out as far in the front either. Let's say that this is uh, maybe a little less than a quarter of a box high. So 
So a quarter of a box is going to be 0.25 times 5, 1.25. And remember that trick from the other project where you can change the work plane by pressing W and then registering on the plane you need to work on. So 1.25. Let's get that lined up. In the middle there and get it lined up in the back. So we know it's a little bit longer or wider, however you like to say it. And probably the same amount on the front, probably a little bit sticks out a little bit in the front, about the same amount as it sticks out in the sides. So the object of uh, this working this way, making this kind of model, isn't to make it perfect. It's to make it as perfect as you can, but guess on things that you can't or that aren't important. So what's important about that is that it's a little bit bigger than the base and smaller than this molding on the bottom. So that's good enough for now. Next we need to find out how many boxes tall is that main part in the middle. So that's all of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a little more than half and it has a tiny bit down here. So I'm going to say, what we say that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three quarters. So 8.75 times 5, 43.75. So move the work plane up there. and go to 43.75. All right. Taking a look at this, I'd say the base probably comes out a little bit further than than the main part of the body of the clock. So if it's a little bit behind, that's just fine. Right now, let's get it all lined up in the back. And then maybe I want to make this a little bit shorter. You know, I just don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to I'm going to bring it out all the way like that. Well, maybe not quite so far. I think what I like is that the edges are all the same. Let's see if we have the width right. So we've got all of 3 squares, 3 quarters of another one, and then a quarter of another one. So I'm going to say that's four squares. So that's going to be 20 wide. And sure enough, we're 20 wide. So that looks good. From here, I'm going to let you work out uh, the rest of the clock. Um, and then when we get to some of the detail, I'll pick it up from there.